All right, connecting again with Dr. Thomas Cunningham, MD over here. How are you, Thomas? Doing great. Thanks for having me. Awesome, awesome. Um, we're going to be talking about foundational strength. We're kicking off a series here on foundational strength. Um, so this is going to be a, an intro video to a series of videos to come. And I think it's probably important to define what foundational strength is sure. so that we know what's to come. So what is that for you, foundational strength? Yeah, so foundational strength for me, at least in my own words, would be the minimal effective dose of a series of lifts that you can do to provide total body wellness and strength. So for me, those entail really just five lifts. So we have two upper body pulls, two upper body pushes, and then one squat motion. Okay, so, so this is off the wall training completely. Wall, completely. This is free weights we're using mm -hmm. or, or body weight. If yeah, I use the barbell on, on all of them other than, other than pull up. Okay, cool. So um, what are the five? Yeah, so the, the two upper body pulls are gonna be the weighted pull up. Mm -hmm. Um, and the deadlift. Those are the two pulls. The two pushes are going to be the bench press and the shoulder press or the standing press. Um, and then I do a pistol squat okay. as, uh, as my squat motion. Two pulls, two pu uh, pushes, and then a pistol squat for kind of the lower body mm -hmm. there. And when are you doing this um, over the course of the year? Do you have you have lifting periods that you're doing or is this um, a fairly consistent routine that you do? Sure. So definitely there's some consistency in that I do it at least once a week all year round to mm -hmm. maintain strength. However, during say a building phase or off season where I'm focused on the strength, I may do it two, three, sometimes four days a week, all those lifts. Okay. And um, are you spacing them out over different days or are you grouping all of those lifts? Sure, on the same day? yeah. Most of the time I do them all in the same day. So I'm doing pretty high intensity, low volume. So just three to five reps of three to five sets of each of them. And if I'm only doing five lifts, that may only take me 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes with a warm up. Three to five reps total mm -hmm. in a set, and then three to five sets total. So on the low end, three reps, three sets, nine lifts total, and that's yeah. your day. Nine, nine bench presses, and that's it. That's your bench press that day. And that's building strength. Building strength, yeah. You're not really getting into that realm of hypertrophy where you would maybe at eight, nine, 10 reps per set. You're doing just the intensity to do the neural recruitment. You're not really going to add a whole lot of lean muscle mass. So if you're wanting to be a bodybuilder, this would not be for you. Okay. So yeah, let's talk about that for a second as it pertains to complementing our climbing. So most of the time we're on the wall or maybe we're doing some hangboard and that kind of thing, but we're, we're not lifting weights. Sure. Um, so why is it important uh, for climbers of all types, whether you're a boulder or sport climber, trad climber, to be doing this type of foundational strength over the course of the year? Sure, so I think there's a couple of reasons. Um, I think the big one that really helps with me is just overall body strength and power. So those pulls and those pushes really allow me to stay on the wall with greater body tension. Mm -hmm. It allows me to generate more power throughout the movements and get my body all in control. Um, that neuro recruitment is really good and transfers really well to climbing. Um, and then the last thing would be just a hormone standpoint. So all of these lifts are really going to maximize growth hormone, testosterone production in men and women, which is going to help with recovery and definitely with your power. So uh, on something like this, if I'm fairly new to this type of training, let's say I'm, I'm climbing all the time. I love yeah. to climb. I'm, on, I'm in the gym. I'm out at the crag. Um, but I haven't done a lot of this. I, can beginners do this? I mean, what are yes. what are some things that I need to understand as somebody mm -hmm. who's maybe fairly new, or maybe I've never done a, a deadlift or a pistol, pistol squat in my life? What do I need to know as I'm exploring this type of training? Sure. So I think form is king. Mm -hmm. So you definitely want to either enroll in a course, seek out a personal trainer, a PT, somebody that can really help you get you know the form down and to start light first and then work your way up. But I think starting with you know the three reps, four reps per set, and only three or four sets total in a workout is perfectly fine. I think you're going to see benefit um, even if you're lifting less weight and then working your way up to maybe heavier and heavier weight each week. Now, can I expect to put on a little bit of weight as I'm starting to do this kind of thing? Is that even a concern? Uh, sure. If, if I'm getting stronger, does it matter yeah. if I'm weighing a little bit more? I, it probably doesn't matter. I think that if you do put on a little bit of muscle mass um, with this regimen, it's probably mass that you needed in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, but for the most part, doing that low volume, high intensity, you're probably not going to put on a whole bunch of weight. I mean, I would say that I just went through about an eight week cycle where I was doing these lifts three or four days a week and I actually lost about a pound. So um, definitely gained strength, didn't put on a whole lot of muscle mass, just worked on that you know, good strength component. And the key there is that it's just not a lot of reps, right? Correct, yeah. I mean, if you're staying under the five 
reps per set, you're really more generating strength and you're making those muscle fiber recruitment better, you're making them more efficient, and you're not really adding more muscle fibers, you're adding more lean mass with that program. Okay, so let me just um, ask about kind of how you program your day. I'm sure there's lots of different ways so that, that people can do it, but you've got five foundational exercises. You're gonna do, let's just keep it easy and say three sets of three reps. Are you doing a set of bench and then a set of deadlift and then a set of um, pistol squats or are you closing out an exercise before moving on to another exercise? What are you doing while you're resting? How long are you resting? That kind of thing. Sure. So I will usually incorporate my hangboarding in with the lifting. Um, it's a really great you know, use of time and so I will stay in one lift, say it's the bench press and I'll do my bench press, say for what you were talking about, the three reps. And then I would move on and do some hangboarding, whether or not that's two hangs or one hang, and then maybe do some some stretching or some you know light aerobic work, and then I would roll back around and do my next set of bench. Okay, so you would before moving on to let's say deadlifts or weighted mm -hmm. pull-ups or something like that, you're going to do all all of your sets of bench, I would, and then you're yeah. going to move on to something else. If you don't have a hangboard available or you want to make good use of your time, I think it would be totally reasonable to do an upper body lift or movement combined with the lower body. So you could do say the bench press and then move into the squat and then maybe do your push press and then move into your weighted pull up or something like that. Got it. So just uh, depends on what kind of facilities, equipment you yeah. have available, what your time is like, how, how efficient you want to be. I've certainly done that. I've done like a set of deadlift followed by a set of bench press. I'll just kind of toggle between the two if I have two bars. If I'm at home and I only have one bar, I'll do all three sets of bench and then I'll move on to something else. Um, Lastly, what about rest? I mean, it sounds like you're doing hangboard and that kind of thing. Is there a, a certain amount of time we want to aim for between sets? Yeah, I, I think maybe at least two to three minutes is a general rule of thumb where you're going to allow that neurologic system enough rest to give it a good try the next point. Okay, great. Um, and then in terms of uh, on season versus off season, and we'll get into all of this when we dive into each one of these specific exercises or do a video on each one of these foundational exercises, but um, as a general rule, uh, how do we look at, right now we're in the middle of summer, you know, here in Louisville, um, but then fall season will be a few months away. Um, when are you peeling back on either the number of sets or the number of reps? Sure. So I would use kind of a general um, strength into power and then a maintenance phase. So at first I'm definitely doing a little bit heavier weight and I'm doing less of the reps. Mm -hmm. So I may be in the three rep range and I'll build that volume trying to gain strength over the summer, over the off season. And then after I start to hit a plateau, maybe somewhere around August, I'll move into more of a power. So I'll go up on the reps, a little bit down on the weight and really work on more of that velocity and that explosivity. And I'm doing those maybe two or three days a week to try to get gains. And then in season, it's just one day a week three to five reps of three to five sets, just once. And still a little bit more explosive in that? Still a little bit more explosive, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah. Uh, right on. Anything else that we need to know about foundational strength? Oh man, I think we're good. We're gonna, we're gonna get strong. We're gonna go jump in and then uh, stay tuned because we're gonna have a video on each one of these uh, foundational strength exercises with Dr. Thomas coming up here.